All right, we are recording. Welcome to the team call, everyone. It is November 12th, and I'm so excited to share with you guys tonight. This is a girlfriend of mine that I live near, and um, I'm going to tell you a quick story about Jocelyn. We've known each other for years. Our kids are in the same school system. Um, we've had kids that have played sports together, that have been in musicals together. Um, she has very, very artistic kids. And so I've seen her at ball games. She's always, always got a smile that lights up a room. Her husband's the same way. They're just an adorable, adorable couple and family. And she's very, very good friends with a good friend of mine. So I've seen her for years and years. And about about, oh, I think about six months ago, maybe, Jocelyn, mm -hmm. you can correct me if I'm wrong. I reached out to her. I, I decided that I really wanted to start some type of a group with women in my area that were involved with business in some degree. It didn't, didn't matter how, but what I considered, I wanted to, I talk and teach and preach about the, the, that you're the sum of the five people you spend your time with and to choose wisely. And so I hand selected a handful of women that we have a restaurant owner, we have um, a spa owner. She has, you know, a, she does hair and massage and nails and all of that. And I hand selected a group of people, and Jocelyn was one of those people that I hand selected. And it's just been this unbelievable blessing because the personalities really, really have melded well together. And we all have different backgrounds and different businesses, but we have a lot in common. And we pray about our businesses together and about you, my team, and you know our different requests. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, start with Jocelyn in just a minute. Couple quick announcements that I want to make, um, guys. Keep watching. This is the last week for Disney points. So for those of you that are tracking your points and really wanting to earn this trip for your family um, this is it this is the last week so best way to get the best amount of points is to have your people sharing with other people to get those triple points so um, keep up with that and we'll keep I'm gonna you know post about that a couple times this week and keep um, keep the excitement high on that and then the iPad um, those of you that are working on your iPad the one I think of right off the top of my head is Lindsay every time I congratulate her on isopult she tells me how many more she has has to get that iPad. So I know several of you guys are going for that too. So um, keep that in mind. Be sure if you are local to me, Super Saturday. Um, I know Connecticut has one. I know Anne's involved with one in Connecticut. Look in your back office. There are Super Saturdays um, all across the country going on in the next few weeks. So um, East Coast people, if you're close enough to get to Susan Wheeler's this Saturday, get there. There's going to be great speakers. It's going to be awesome. My local people is right here in Sugar Creek. And I am having an after party for my team. So you have to come over to my house after for the party. So beyond that, we're going to get started now. And I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Jocelyn. You guys will absolutely adore her. And Jocelyn, what I'd like you to do, um, first of all, you guys, um, she does, she is in the business. She does use the products, her and her husband. She's had great results and she has started sharing as well. Um, but I had her here for kind of a different reason. So you'll see as we well to um, communicate here why I thought she'd be so great for you guys. But would you share um, your background a little bit? Give us, give us a little bit of your story and and really how I got to know you through your Towards the Gold ministry as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, first of all, Cindy, for inviting me on this. It is just a privilege and a joy to be here and to meet all of you guys. So thank you. Um, Bruce and I, my husband, uh, we started Towards the Gold Ministries. Uh, it's been about six years now. Um, started out is just it's just awesome. It's a coaching ministry, mentoring ministry, and we love to train servant leaders uh, in business and in community and um, even in the schools now, which is really cool. So we're really enjoying that. Uh, but it's been about six years um, that we started this, stepped out in faith. It was a faith adventure. And so that's how we got to know Cindy, though, too, with the servant leadership. Um, we started having leadership huddles, uh, servant leadership huddles. And so she was uh, interested in coming to that. And so it's just been a joy to get to know her um, in that way, too. So um, but about six years ago, actually seven or eight, actually, we'll, we'll back it up a little bit. Um, it was it was an interesting time. My husband, Bruce, was in congregational ministry. And we just saw so many needs, so many hurting people. And so we saw that those needs were just not being taken care of. People weren't just flocking into the church, um, you know, just to, to have some um, health and healing. And so 
we felt like God was just saying, hey, you know, go out. Um, it was like the walls of the church were coming down. Go out to where people are. Meet them on their turf. Um, just go and walk alongside people. Um, be available. Be available for my Holy Spirit to do whatever I want to do, but be available for people. And so that's what we did. And so it was just a really cool, um, very scary, unsettling, um, but very uh, just felt so uplifted and supported during that time of, of just stepping out in faith and, and um, just embracing this, this new call. Um, and so we started reaching out and walking alongside people in business. Um, spending a lot of time on their turf because that's where a lot of people spend their time in business and in the marketplace and and we would go out into community I meet with a lot of women in coffee shops um, a lot of leaders in coffee shops um, and then just yeah walking alongside mentoring younger women um, Bruce walking alongside a lot of leaders so it's just been an incredible incredible ride so and it's grown <laughs> tell tell them your um your leadership symposiums are probably the biggest events that you do now and this guys this was this is when i heard about this event and i went to this event i was so impressed with the training that i was like oh my gosh i am going to every single thing that these guys offer because in our area there's not a lot of people that teach and, and talk about servant leadership and all the things that we love to learn about. And so I was just so excited that it was there. So how many people have you guys gotten at your leadership symposiums now? Well, the, the are you talking the first symposium at, at Kent? Kent or yeah. 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 That one was initiated by Provia. Bruce has started a leadership development class at the place he works. And so that symposium was led by, he was led a class of 10. And they did this phenomenal undertaking, invited community leaders. There was almost, was it 800 people, eight to 900 leaders that came together um, and they had great speakers and uh, it was just phenomenal. Yeah, um, and it's so, go ahead, Cindy. I was going to say, and what I love is that leaders from all different walks of life, you guys, some were teachers, some were pastors, some were business owners, some were network marketers. I mean, it, it was like every type of person, but we all loved the messages. So that was what, what I was just so attracted to and, and love your work so much. And that you guys go into businesses and teach the same things that you, I, the way I word it is you guys speak my love language. <laughs> yeah, we love to go into businesses. We do mentoring in businesses. We teach leadership classes. Um, we do team kinds of team building things. We do the disc personality kinds of stuff. Um, just all kinds of, um, yeah, just taking, well, we'll go a year at a time and work with a, a group of 10 to 12. Um, and the whole idea is to develop those leaders so they can step into positions and they can just continue to reload at their businesses. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Well, I've got a huge list for you and I know we'll never make it through all of it. And so we'll, maybe we'll get Bruce back and we'll do a part two on this, but let's talk a little bit about, you talk about when we were preparing for this call, uh, intentionality living from busyness living. Can you share yeah. a little, what, what does that mean and how could it help my team as we're working and growing our businesses? Absolutely. I am passionate about intentional living, just growing up. Um, just to give you a little background, I just, I felt powerless growing up. I was in a situation that was not healthy growing up. And so I always felt like I really didn't have a whole lot of control. Um, and so I kind of adopted that mindset. We you know it's kind of just stand back and just let things happen and just wait and hopefully they come and you know that whole idea of um, just yeah powerlessness and so but what was really cool when I started to be mentored it was in my late twenties um, just sitting down with an older wiser woman who was just pouring into my life I just began to see like she was calling out things strengths and things she saw in me and and just really encouraging and giving such a different perspective on life. And, and so it was just so cool to see that, you know what, I can live an intentional life. Um, what I was, I was doing was I was trying so hard for so long to perform, live out of performance because I was trying to prove myself. Right. Um, and so I was so busy and doing so many different things um, that I was exhausted. I ended up in an exhausted heap and not being really effective in, uh, and so it was really cool from her mentoring conversations through the years and just from seeing that, the results I was getting, it was like, you know, 
God's calling me into something intentional. And so obviously it, it, when we can condense that and, and be more focused and go, okay, this is what I'm called to. This is where my passion is. This is where um, I see needs and where my passion meets those needs. Um, all of a sudden the pie of our life goes from cheesecake slices to peanut butter cream pie slices. You know, and it's like thicker and just there's much more there to give. Um, and when we give those pieces away to people, they're more satisfied than all these little cheesecake slices we're trying to give away and say, here, you know, take it. And this is what I have for you. Um, so it was, and there was more fulfillment for me. It was almost like less is more, you know, I was doing less, but more wholeheartedly. Um, and so I just really feel like I, I want to encourage people and, you know, in their busyness and there's so much to do and there's so many good things to do but activity doesn't always mean achievement. And so it's like, okay, what, what are you, what's your passion and where are the needs? And then the, when those two unite and, and especially as a woman of faith, I'm like, okay, God, where do you want me? And, and through prayer and discernment, it was like, okay, this, this is, is where I'm going to zero in on. Um, so that's kind of what I mean by that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's so good for us because, you know, many of us, so a lot of the, a lot of the people on this call have jobs outside of isogenics. So they're juggling jobs. Many are moms, they're juggling that. And they're really wanting isogenics to be a big part of that. And I was, um, talking to a good friend yesterday and telling her that, I've just made some decisions that I'm having to say no to some things now that I don't want to say no to, but I just felt like it was pulling me away from isogenics and my real huge vision and why of serving my team. And so I felt like, you know, it's just too many irons in the fire is not a good thing. Like I used to be so proud of multitasking. Now I'm like, all right, I really need to be better focused. So I'm more effective. So I'm, I'm spot on with that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, you were you and I were sharing about stepping out and taking risks because a lot of what we do is uncomfortable and sometimes it means us talking to people that may be maybe on our chicken list that we think could be so good at this and we call it our chicken list because we're afraid to, to talk to them and so sometimes talking to people and if, if we're maybe a little introverted or a little shy we don't we're worried about what other people are gonna think we're afraid to take those risks so let's talk a little bit about stepping out mm -hmm. That's one thing too, that I, you got to believe in what you do. And that's one thing when just knowing you, Cindy, I know you believe in what you do. I know you believe in the product, but I know you believe in helping people and serving people. And that's evident and that comes through. And so that propels you to take some of those risks, right? Um, and it's the same way in, in our life with, you know, we're, we're into, um, trafficking awareness, human trafficking awareness, um, as we walk alongside women and, and young girls. And so it's like, I believe in that. And it's caused me to go into places where I normally probably wouldn't have thought I'd be going, you know, five years ago, um, to go in and, and to build relationship with women. And, and so that propels me and it's scary sometimes. And you're thinking, man, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> um, but yet it's what we believe in and that's the fire and the fuel that propels us to step out. Um, so that's what I, what I would say to your team is, do you believe in it? And if you believe in the why and the ultimate, the bigger picture um, and the purpose, and it's ultimately people, you know, helping people and serving people, man, it's, it's worth it. Life is short, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's life is short and it's take the risk. If, if you believe in it, go, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and belief is, belief is so crucial to this. You know, we, in, in this business, we talk about our belief in the products has to be a 10 out of 10. Our belief in the company has to be a 10 out of 10. Those are easy. Our belief in network marketing has to be a 10 out of 10. And where most people struggle is their belief in themselves that they can do this. So it is so huge. And when you do believe you can do it, you're willing to take those risks. You're willing to talk to people on your chicken list and go to places that you traditionally wouldn't feel comfortable going. So Awesome. All right. Um, one of the things that you guys do so well, and, and I, I'm, I, I'm also in, in a total agreement with, is mentoring and modeling. So let's talk a little bit about that. If, if we have people on the call tonight that maybe don't view themselves as a leader quite yet, and they really, really desperately want it, um, how can they model others? And you know, what, what do you have to say about mentoring and modeling? I, oh my goodness, I say adopt a mindset of mentoring. And what I mean by that is find somebody who you respect, 
who's good at what they do, who has solid character, who you respect, believe in, um, and, and you can model, you feel good about modeling, and ask them to pour into your life and ask them questions and learn all you can from them and get multiple mentors. I think that's awesome, you know, in different areas of your life even. Um, and then learn and glean and, and you could have them give you opportunities where you kind of have a learning lab and, and you can do it, you can fail safely, you know what I'm saying? And just try um, and come back and go, okay, you know, this and this and this, help me debrief this and, and what would you do next time? And ask all kinds of questions. And then um, as you spend time with that person, I'm telling you, it's going to take root that you're going to want to mentor and pour into other people. And that's what it's about. I'm telling you, it's like, you know, sometimes we think I don't have what it takes. I don't know enough. Um, I'm, you know, you know, I can't do this, but I want to encourage everybody. It's like you have life experiences. You have things that have happened to you, like lessons you've learned because you've lived them. Um, and so we're not going to have all the answers and that's okay. No one expects you to, um, but we do have so much to pass on to the next generation, to the next person in line, the next person that's, you know, doesn't quite, isn't quite as far along in, you know, in whatever we're doing, pour into them. I mean, it is so fulfilling. It truly is. It's rewarding and it will, it will lead to a life of reward and not regret. I'm telling you, if we can invest in people and, and pass things on, um, there'll be great reward. So. That's awesome. Firmly believe, in it. Firmly believe in it. What one of the things um, when I when I saw you guys at this leadership sim, uh, leadership symposium, say that ten times fast. Um, that's where I met Roy Hall, you guys. So my team knows Roy um, locally. I had him at a big Super Saturday event I did in Columbus, but I've also had him as a guest on our call, so they know him. And he spoke about servant leadership that day, and oh, did I love that! So let's talk a little bit about um, being a servant leader and what what does that mean. Oh my goodness, that is leading by serving. I mean, there is just, it is what it sounds like. Um, it's coming alongside other people. Um, it is coming underneath other people. Uh, there's one picture I love, and I'm, I'm going to just kind of paint it here for you when it comes to servant leadership, but it's, it's what we call table leg leadership or chair leg leadership. And it's the whole idea of, you know, when you walk into a room, do you notice the the table legs or the chair legs. Most likely you don't, right? Um, you, you walk in a room, you see that tabletop, maybe you see something on the tabletop that's beautiful in arrangement, but you don't notice the legs. Uh, and so servant leadership though, you would notice, let me back up, you would notice if you walked in and you had to sit on the floor or there's no legs to that chair. And so you're like, what in the world is this? Or you walk in and the tabletop is, is sitting on the floor, there's no legs. You would definitely notice that. It's so evident and obvious. Um, and so this whole idea of servant leadership is being those table legs to somebody. It's being those chair legs. And so it's coming up underneath others. It's helping them get ahead. It's being a quiet, silent strength to somebody else. It's not going, woohoo, here I am. You know, it is just coming underneath and saying, what do you need? How can I help? How can I serve? Um, a lot of times it's identifying strengths in other people and saying, have you ever tried this? You might, you'd be really good at this. Um, it's just coming alongside and saying, how can I support you? How can I encourage you? Um, and then when you watch them, and they try it and they succeed, there is such a fulfillment um, in knowing that, that you had a part in that, in lifting them up um, so that, yeah, so they, they can get ahead, they can grow, they can develop. Um, it's a beautiful thing, it really is. So. Yeah, and my team has heard me say this over and over again, but my, one of my all-time favorite quotes is a Zig Ziglar quote, if you help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And I think that's, that's how we're blessed when we really are, when we really do come below people and we really wish to serve them in order to help them achieve their goals in this business then we achieve ours by default. It just, it happens that way. So when you, when you can really be that kind of a leader that cares more about your people and their results than you do yourself, that's, that's when really the magic happens. And it's not the easiest thing to teach. 
like not everybody gets this naturally, but I think, you know, mentoring, you know, by having a mentor that teaches it and does it and does it well, then, then you can learn it and then you can model it to people and pay it forward. Yeah, right. And I think people get threatened, you know, when they hear, when they hear servant leadership, it's not, like you said, it's not your typical model. Um, and, and we can get threatened as leaders if we're insecure leaders. And so that's why I always go back to, you know, um, there's such reward in it. We're missing out if we don't lead like this or grow in this way. And so I have had, you know, if someone's asked me a question already, you know, how do you, how do you get to that point or how do you, are you open to that? And that's when I would just encourage, you know, we got to lead ourselves first, right? Before we can lead others, we have to lead ourselves. And so I, I go back to a tree analogy and the roots of the tree, you know, it's, it's the roots that determine the fruit. And so it's like, are my roots secure? Um, are they healthy? And so oftentimes, uh, and even in mentoring, it's, it's starting with the roots um, in ourselves, but starting with the roots in the people that we're developing um, and helping them discover, you know, what's inside because what's inside comes out. We lead from who we are. And so there's this whole idea of, of servant leadership is it's looking at ourselves uh, first and developing ourselves to become secure leaders so that we can uh, come up underneath others and, and serve and lead that way. So. And that's what I was going to ask you about next was talking about insecure versus secure mm -hmm. leadership. And how does one go from feeling insecure to feeling more secure? So I know you already touched on that. Is there anything else you mm -hmm. want to expand on with that? I would say that I, I think that is a growth process. And I think that um, you're going to you do a lot of work. <laughs> I think you do a lot of work in developing yourself um, and you take care of wounds maybe that you've had um, baggage in there or, or things that can self-sabotage. Um, I think you whether that's through counseling, whether that's through, you know, just identifying different lies that maybe you've believed um, and then looking at those and kind of course correcting and, and changing your beliefs a little bit. Um, I think all that kind of self hard work um, can, can take you from insecurity to security. Um, I think having wise counselors, having people model and mentor that you go to for mentors who are secure um, and you ask them all kinds of questions and you watch how they do it. Um, that helps. I, I think too, just continuing to grow and, and put yourself, um, just develop yourself with resources and books and reading and just continuing to grow and embracing your strengths, embracing um, how God made you and that that's good and, and then growing in those. I think a lot of times we, we are so busy looking at somebody else that we're ignoring what's inside of us, the good, and how we can embrace those and use those. Um, so there's a lot of different things, I think, and I think that takes time um, and hard work, but it's so possible. Um, and so obviously as we grow and develop and, and get more secure, um, there's going to be times where we have to go back to our roots and go, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, I need to get secure here in, in, in making this decision. There's going to be times everybody has insecure times and insecurities they deal with. Um, so I think it's a lot of that, a, a lot of um, looking inside first and then uh, growing and developing and healing and, and yeah, looking to our mentors and things like that. So that's great. That's great. Okay. How about, um, let's chat a little bit about, um, sunny and 75. Tell us a little bit about that disposition and you know, how, how can that help my team? <clears throat> sunny and 75 basically is, um, are you approachable? It's the, it's, we talk about the weather report. You know, if you know this individual who um, maybe you work with, live with, uh, do life with, and you're going, you know, how is she today? You're asking a coworker or, you know, what's it like today? And, and you've got somebody who can be kind of volatile or just moody. You never know how they're going to be. And that can be rough, right? And so, of course, we look at ourselves and we go, okay, am I, are, are people asking for a weather report on me uh, kind of thing? And so it's just a challenge to, to um, be consistent as far as approachability and the way we carry ourselves. And um, are we open to people and inviting people um, to approach us? And, um, but it's that whole sunny and 75 disposition. Um, before we go into conversations um, with, with clients or, or people were on our chicken list even, you know, are we having um, a sunny and 75 
uh, conversation with ourselves, getting our hearts right, getting our minds right, that kind of thing. So we are approachable. So we are open. Um, so that is kind of that mindset. Um, trying to think. It's, it's just that the, there's one quote that, that I have heard with this that I just love, and this pops out to me, is that we can't follow um, and fear at the same time. People can't follow us and fear us at the same time as leaders, as team members. Um, and so that really sticks out to me with Sunny in 75. It's like, okay, I want to be a, a team member, a teammate, a leader um, who is approachable and um, who obviously that's going to strengthen relationships. Um, we're going to be able to speak into people's lives um, and have impact. Um, when with that disposition. So. And aren't we more attracted to that too? I mean, I can think of a couple leaders that I've known in my lifetime, um, more in the corporate world than in network marketing for sure, but that are fear-based and they use fear to get people into action and it couldn't be more opposite of network marketing. We, we use praise and um, we find the good in everyone and we really try to, to pull that out from people and we, we recognize them and it's just such a different environment. So we want to be leaders that have that sunny and 75 disposition that are approachable, that our team can come to for help and know our first and foremost goal is their success. And that is what we care most about. So they can always feel free to come to us. So that's great. All right. And, and I think I'm going to get through the majority of my list. I'm so impressed. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you before I ask you about, um, about some books that you might recommend, because you guys read the same books I do. It just cracks me up. So you can be thinking about that. Okay. But um, we talked about two environments um, of pride and humility. Can you talk a little bit about that for us? Yeah, it's another word picture. We like word pictures. Um, we like to paint pictures. But it's this whole idea of uh, we can create two environments as leaders. Uh, one is a kind of a ladder, climbing the ladder, pride, uh, elevating ourselves kind of picture. If you imagine someone um, taking a step on the ladder, um, they gain a little more clout, gain a little more credibility, um, but they take another step. Um, and then they begin to kind of humble brag and, and, you know, and then take another step. And, and they begin to elevate themselves over their people um, and that they overlook. So as it's interesting because as they take another step up the ladder, um, they get further from their people, um, which is kind of interesting. And so, um, there's that whole pride elevates. Also, as we climb higher um, away from our people uh, and, and have a haughtier attitude, an arrogant attitude, I'm going to lord over and lead this way. It's, it's a little risky in the fact that we could fall. We can fall off the ladder pretty quick and hurt ourselves and in the process. And so but the whole idea with this humility environment and are we creating that kind of environment with our team? Um, it's this kneeling kneeling down and lifting others up kind of like at the table like leadership but obviously you can't fall off the floor um, and so it's it's staying down and it's staying it's staying low and it's staying with your people and bringing others along doing it together kind of thing so that's one thing we talk about is just what kind of environment are we creating yeah. And, you know, it's, it's funny, um, Jocelyn, just a background for you. We've got, you know, our team and our team culture and there's other teams in the company too. And, and friends that I have from other teams will always say, I just admire your team so well. They really seem like it's just such a great culture that, that your leaders have created. And it's something I'm so proud of because most of this stuff you guys already know. She's, she's giving you, they're writing in the chat box that they love your analogies, Jocelyn. So you can't see that, but but, um, but that's what they're saying. And I think, you know, this team is, I'm just so proud of the leaders here because these are things they live and eat and breathe. And hearing you explain it this way is, is kind of cool because it's a little bit different, a little twist on it. But hopefully it's making you guys feel like, gosh, at a girl, at a guy, I'm, I'm on, I'm on to something and I'm doing a good job here and we can always get better. And that's, that's why, you know, I still go to trainings. I'm, I'm going to something on Thursday with Jocelyn and her husband, another, um, they call them huddles where they get a couple business leaders from the community in and they do these trainings in the mornings. And it's just a great way for us to continually learn and 
grow because we're never going to be done learning and growing. So um, my last question, and then if you guys have any questions for Jocelyn, type them in the chat and I'll ask her. But I would love to hear some of your favorite book um, recommendations because guys, when they do events, they often give books out at the end of the event. And it's so funny because so many of them are the hot books that I'm into right now that our team is reading. So tell us maybe some of your, your favorite books that, that you and Bruce love to give out. My ultimate favorite leadership book is The Way of the Shepherd. Have you, have you guys heard of that one? <laughs> you you gave me that one, but. It is, it's my all time favorite. Um, with The Way of the Shepherd, um, this, another great one would be Passing the 21 Tests of Leadership. That is exceptional as well. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, let's see, uh, there's one just called Servant Leadership. Um, and so that's, that's a great one as well. Um, Mentoring 101 um, and, and winning with people. I know John Maxwell, you know, um, he's got some great ones. Um, those two are, are some of my favorites. The winning with people, especially the 360 degree leader is, is phenomenal as well. Um, it's so practical. Uh, we like practical. Uh, so those are some of my top favorites um, right off the top. I mean, off my head, but leadership. So. That's great. And um, I think you guys either read or gave away to the energy bus and the, um, the is it the carpenter? Carpenter by John Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So he's, yeah, another great, great author. Yeah. yeah. Those books just kind of suck you right in. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, is there anything else like guys, if you have questions, type them in the chat box, but anything else, Jocelyn, that you'd like to say as we kind of wrap things up here um, for our team and any maybe advice you'd want to give them on, on, on being the leader that they desire to be and, and growing and building a business? I just, you know, I just want to say, I just am really excited for you guys. I thank you for number one. I just thank you for what you do because you do make a difference. Like Cindy said, my husband and I have enjoyed the product and it's, it is, it's a fantastic product. So thank you. Thank you for helping people. Thank you for serving people. Thank you for what you do. Cause it doesn't make a difference. It re really does. By the way, my sister's on it too now. <laughs> She's lost weight and her cholesterol is coming down. So it's really exciting. So that's cool. Um, so thank you for what you do. Um, but just continue. I think just continue to develop yourselves as leaders, personal development. Um, I think sometimes, um, yeah, we have to lead ourselves first. And so just continue to develop yourself and then please, please, please pour into somebody else. That is, that, that is such a gift. And, and that's what we're called to do. And so I just would encourage you, please adopt that mentoring mindset and just look for people you can pour into. You've got a lot of great things to pass on. And so please do that because somebody else is, is now where you've been. Um, and so they, they need someone um, to pour into them. And that can be business-wise, that can be in life. Um, so please do that. There's a lot of, of people who are hungry to learn and grow. Um, and, and you've got those, those answers for them and, the, and that encouragement. So that would be my biggest, my biggest encouragement. So. That's great. And, and Jocelyn and I also share, you know, my team knows most of my team. There might be some new people on here, but they know my childhood and my background. And, you know, I think Jocelyn and I are passionate about helping and serving other people because you know, we did have a couple people who believed in us and helped us and we were able to overcome some pretty, pretty yucky things. And now that's why we're so passionate about paying it forward and helping other people and pouring belief into them and letting people know that you think they'd be great at this and tell them why. And, you know, there's so many things that you can do and words that you can say that can really lift people up. And that's, that's what we're here to do, lift people up. So there are, um, I, I don't even know how to use your analogy. So there are four legs on their, on their chair, right? Three legs yeah. on school. You know, make sure that you are always operating with a servant's heart and, and taking care of your people. And you'll be blessed by it, guys. You'll be blessed tenfold when you really have a heart to, to truly make a difference and impact other people's lives. Well, I can't thank you enough, Jocelyn. You were, you were absolutely wonderful like I knew you would be. Her husband was supposed to be with us tonight, you guys, and um, maybe keep, a, keep him in your prayers. Um, he's with his dad who's not, not doing very well and is kind of at the end. So um, keep him in your prayers, and um, thank you, Jocelyn. You're, you're just a beautiful soul. I adore you. Thank you, Cindy. You're precious. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, you, you blessed us, and uh, I'll see you Thursday. Thank okay. you, guys. We love you and we are just so grateful for you 